Yeah. For many, many years, I preached at the jail. And uh, my heart always went out to those men. I remember going to a, a state jail one year that had a large cell block of prisoners. And I preached to them. I don't know how many was in that block. But afterwards, I invited any men want to say, talk to me to come up to the bars. And I was amazed that six of the men that came up to talk to me, of course, I told my testimony about being a preacher's son and all that I went through to get saved and surrender to preach. Six of those men were preacher's sons in that jail. I have a place in my heart for prisoners. And every Sunday that I ever went to preach to them, they'd come in reverently, respectfully. I never was mistreated like some preachers have been treated. But there was always a very good listening group of men and very responsive, I might say. But I had no God wanted me to convince them that he loved them and that I loved them. And I could tell when they started believing in me that I cared about them and that's the reason I was there. I tried to put myself in their place and think what it would be like to be where they were. Of course, my testimony if God hadn't have saved me, I knew I'd either be in the penitentiary or the cemetery or in the institution for the insane. I really believe that. I've always believed that. But God, by his marvelous grace, reached down his hand for me. It was total a work of grace that God kept my soul out of hell. I believe I got very close to the brink of hell. I really do. I believe I was as close as the thief on the cross. And he reached down his hand for me. Oliver Green used to pray in his closing prayer, save that sinner nearest hell. And I believe that day I got saved, that was me. But there's a song that I heard that I said, God wants me to sing this to those prisoners. I imagine the prisoners, they're caught, arrested. They're tried and convicted and found guilty. And then the last thing is for the judge to hand down their sentence. And there they would be in the courtroom with their lawyer, their advocate, the prosecuting attorney and the judge sitting on the, the judge's seat with his gavel about ready to fall as he announced the sentence. This song is, a, is an allegory, a sort of a parable, if you please, of that of a sinner, a criminal, a lost man undone. He's now standing before the judge and he's waiting for his sentence. And the song goes like this. I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke up, your honor. I have no defense. And that's when mercy walked in. You see, the last hope is mercy. 
mercy walk in pleaded my case call to the stand god saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in i stood there and i wondered how could this be <clears throat> that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were broken i felt born again the moment that mercy walked in mercy walked in pleaded my case call to the stand god save the grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in thank god he said his mercy endureth forever want you to turn your bibles tonight to the 37th chapter of psalm psalm 37 now listen it's important for this message that you get your bible out and read along with me it's very important and that's really the main message tonight to have you look at these words this is one of the most magnificent chapters in all the word of god it's a psalm written by david who cried out as he waited on the lord this psalm will contrast the saved and the lost the righteous the redeemed versus the wicked and it's a parallelism we call it parallel poetry it's not rhyming but the thoughts parallel each other you have the saved versus the unsaved so you see the blessing of being saved versus the terrible fate of being unsaved. So take your Bibles. I hope everyone does this. Turn to Psalm 37 and let's read it slowly together. Now, when you see the word Lord, spelt with all capital letters that is the name of god we let pronounce yahweh so when you see l o r d in capitals that is yahweh and when you see an l with a small o r d that's jehovah so let us begin and and let's watch for those names. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. And we attempted to do that, aren't we? Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so thou shalt dwell in the land. And verily, 
thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, and though but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth, praise God. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yet thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, gnasheth against him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword. They've bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation or lifestyle. For their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord, Yahweh, notice that, knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked, they shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, Yahweh, shall be fat as lambs, and they shall consume, and smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and give for such as be blessed shall inherit the earth and that be cursed of him shall be cut off the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighteth in his way and though he fall he shall not utterly be cast down for the lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is an ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and do well forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the, well, there's eternal security, is it not? <clears throat> but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God 
is in his heart and none of his feet or steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I've seen the wicked in great power and spread himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. For the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Blessed be the Lord and the reading of his word. I see throughout this great, wonderful, divine inspired chapter, I see the word Yahweh spelt in our English first capital capital letters L O R D and this is the name Yahweh Yahweh is his name Yahweh is his primary name Yahweh is his personal name Yahweh represents his deity and he that he is eternal that he is uncreated and he's the source of all life he is timeless he is unchangeable he is self-existent and self-sufficient Yahweh the Lord speaks of his universal sovereignty. Yahweh, capital L-O-R-D. This is his covenant name, and it expresses his eternal being. Every time you say the word hallelujah, you are saying, Yah, praise Yahweh. God very much wants you to know and speak and pray his name, Yahweh. It pleases the Lord for you to speak the Hebrew word, Yah, name Yahweh. God is Lord. The Lord is Yahweh. Now, Lord spelt was capital L and then small letters is the English translator's way of telling you it's Jehovah. But God is the Lord. You, Yahweh is the Lord. Yahweh reveals God's total sovereignty. I repeat, it's his primary name. Let me give you some of his secondary names. And there's more than I'm going to name here tonight. But here's the most common ones. Elohim, which means my creator. Jehovah means God is my Lord. El Shaddai means he is my supplier. Adonai means he's my master. Jehovah Jireh means he's my provider. Jehovah Rophe means he's my healer. 
Jehovah Nisi, he is my banner. Jehovah Maketish, he's my sanctifier. Sometimes Jehovah or Yahweh and Jehovah are interchangeable. Originally, what we now pronounce as Yahweh was Y-H-W-H -H in the beginning. And it does not have any vowels. And you can't really pronounce anything without vowels. And so the Jews felt the name of God that was Y-H-W-H -H was too holy to pronounce. Though there was questions that it was not prohibited, but they thought it was too holy to pronounce. And they chose rather to use the name Jehovah. Now, before this developed, when the people said, when other people, other nations came to the Jews and they said, what's your God's name? Well, they couldn't answer. When Moses was up on Sinai the, before the burning bush and God was commissioning him to go back to Egypt to lead and deliver the children of Israel. And Moses said, well, what am I going to tell him your name is? What is your name? And for the first time, God revealed that he would be known as I am that I am. And that means that he's eternal. He's I am of the past, the present, the future, and always. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. Now Yahweh, putting in the vows to make it pronounceable, is a transliteration of Y-H-W-H, -H, as I said, to make it pronounceable. And as I also said, many chose to say Jehovah instead of Yahweh. I personally believe, for whatever that's worth, that Yahweh is God's preferable name. L-O-R-D in capitals, Yahweh. And then L, small o, small r-d, is Jehovah. And I'll repeat in closing that Yahweh means God is the source of all life. And God possesses life in himself, and he's the only one that does. His being is self-existent. He's self-sustaining. He is self-efficient. God is God. God is the isness of God. He deserves our worship, our love, our service, our faithfulness. He deserves our everything. And he is to be our everything. So tonight, all glory and praise be to Yahweh, our great God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that we would learn in our Christian life to personalize you, especially in prayer and praise and worship. Lord, help us to learn how to express terms and language that pleases, honors, and glorifies you. May the devil be bound, captives be set free, lost souls saved, backsliders restored, the church revived, your perfect glories will be done. In the name for the glory of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um.
we meet together.